It's hard to believe that six months shy of its 10th anniversary, Mario Kart 8 just received its final 8 tracks with the release of Booster Course Wave 6. It's safe to say there has never been a Mario Kart with even close to as many tracks as Deluxe now has, and while I'm surprised they didn't release another cup for the even 100 tracks, I'm also glad because in this video I'm ranking all 96 Mario Kart 8 Deluxe tracks from worst to best. It might be obvious, but it's worth stating that this is just my list and not something I'm asserting as fact, so get yourself ready to seethe and cope your eyes out as I give my inconsistent and at best tenuous reasons for why I've ranked your favorite track lower than I should have. Truth be told, if you had me do this list 100 different times, the order would likely be slightly different all 100 times, so let's just have some fun as we go through every track. And as always, be sure to let me know what your favorite and least favorite courses are in the comments down below, and without further delay, welcome to every Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Course Ranked. Tokyo Blur is a pretty good example of the worst of what Mario Kart Tour has to offer. This basic track disappoints because it really doesn't do the setting of Tokyo justice. It feels like you're driving around a fairly generic city with some Japanese text splashed here or there, but it just doesn't feel very inspired. When I think of great Mario Kart tracks, they usually have a unique gimmick or a really cool set piece, or at least an interesting aesthetic, but Tokyo Blur has none of that. Its only saving grace is a pretty incredible music track, but considering most of the music in Mario Kart 8 is great, that's not going to get it any higher on this list. Of all the Game Boy Advance remakes, I'd say Boo Lake is the least impressive to me. It's a really short course, and while that isn't inherently a bad thing, it just doesn't contain anything special to help it stand out. Seriously, there is nothing noteworthy about this track, and it doesn't help that the lake portion of Boo Lake ends almost as soon as it begins. Overall, it's just an extremely forgettable course that gets lost in the shuffle of great Mario Kart tracks, but I guess at least we got a pretty sweet Ghost House remix out of it. When I played Sunset Wilds for the first time, I was excited because I really enjoyed the cowboy vibes and Prospector-themed music, but unfortunately it wound up being a pretty lame track. While it's adorable seeing Shy Guy Prospectors running around, this track just feels uneventful. The oil slick gimmick isn't all that unique or impactful, and there's no big jumps or set pieces to speak of, leaving it to be a pretty standard race. The problem with that is the course itself is short and relatively flat, making it seem totally dull by comparison to nearly every other track in Mario Kart 8. Though many of the GBA courses are simple, as we'll see later that's not necessarily always a bad thing, but in Sunset Wild's case, it really holds it back from being a good Mario Kart track. As someone who has lived about an hour from New York City my entire life, I have some questions about New York Minute. Where are all the freaks? Where are all the weirdos? Where's the trash that lines the streets? Where's the disgusting smell that permeates the air? Alright, well, I can forgive Nintendo for that last one, but the rest I find unacceptable. In all seriousness though, New York Minute really doesn't do a lot for me considering it's just another city-based level which has been done in more interesting ways both in prior Mario Karts and Mario Kart 8 itself. It also doesn't help that New York is not as special of a destination to me as it might be for others, but I blame the track for not featuring anything interesting or cool to impress me anyway. Overall, it is a very mediocre to bad track that goes to show why the Mario Kart Tour maps were initially not very well received. It's clear that the appeal of the city-based Mario Kart Tour courses lies in the ability to see these real-life locations and tourist attractions in a Mario setting, but in practice, I just don't find them all that interesting. I'd much rather be racing in a giant pinball machine or on the different levels of a cruise ship, and it's why Berlin Byways just doesn't do much for me personally. Granted, I'm not familiar enough with Berlin or many of these international cities to be able to fully appreciate their details, but even if I was, I'd still want a more interesting track to race on. While aesthetic and visuals are certainly a major contributing factor to the enjoyment of any Mario Kart track, I really do feel like I'm on a tour in Berlin byways because the course is so pedestrian. Thankfully, later tour tracks managed to amp up the excitement levels because Berlin byways, like a vast majority of tour tracks from the first three waves of the Booster Course Pass, feels like filler to pad out the game's course count. Of all the circuit-based courses in Mario Kart 8, Toad Circuit is to me the most forgettable. Aside from the giant toad floats that loom overhead, this is an incredibly bland racetrack. There are no interesting turns, the shortcuts are obvious and not that significant, and the lap itself is pretty short. It's not that I necessarily dislike this toad circuit, it's just that outside its music track, I'm just so indifferent towards this course I barely remember it at all. Is Snowland a bad track? No, but it is the most generic in all of Mario Kart 8 and perhaps the entire series. Its name says it all, you're racing on a track surrounded by snow, and that's pretty much it. 
There are a few penguins sliding around the stage, I suppose, but really this is one of the least visually engaging courses in the entire game. The track itself is also pretty boring with no anti-gravity, underwater, or sky sections to speak of, and very few opportunities to nail tricks as well. Truthfully, the only thing that's above average about this track is its music, and even then it's basically like a Christmas version of Chaco Mountain. Snowland's a bottom tier track for sure, and one of the most forgettable in the entire series. There isn't anything particularly bad about Shroom Ridge, but nothing really noteworthy about it either. I suppose there are a few good turns that are satisfying to get Ultra Mini Turbos from, but otherwise this stage feels quite flat and plain compared to most other Mario Kart 8 stages. It does feel somewhat relaxing because of this, so if you enjoy the casual feel of racing along a hillside then this might be a stage for you. But in my eyes, Shroom Ridge is an unremarkable track that's easy to forget even exists, which is why it's in the bottom 10. Most of Mario Kart 8's original maps are good if not great, but Twisted Mansion is one that falls kind of flat with me. I appreciate some of its course design, and it feels great to jump ahead with the library shortcut, but it doesn't really offer much else of note. I'm not crazy about spooky horror-themed things to begin with, so that doesn't help its case with me, and it also has one of the few music tracks in Mario Kart 8 that I dislike. It's a little too goofy and campy for my taste, which is unfortunate because most courses I consider bad at least have solid music to fall back on. I'd be shocked to learn that I've ever selected this course online because ultimately I don't have a lot of praise for it, and it's why Twisted Mansion is so low on this ranking. Ninja Hideaway is honestly one of my least favorite tracks to race on because of the course design just isn't all that fun. There are too many sharp turns for my liking, and the final turn in particular stands out as one of my least favorite in all of Mario Kart. However, I can't help but appreciate the ninjutsu shy guys that appear out of thin air and the overall cool ninja aesthetic. Had the course design been a little more fun or the music a little more memorable, this could have been one of my favorites, but as is, it's in the bottom of the pack. There are some tracks that are difficult to articulate why you like or dislike them, and Bone Dry Dunes fits perfectly into the latter category for me as I've never really understood why it's not a track I like racing on. The course puts a fresh spin on a classic theme and is aesthetically nice to look at. Its music is unique and fitting for its setting, and driving into the mouth of a giant dry bone is one of the cooler set pieces in the game. But something about this course just doesn't work for me, and I almost never select it when playing online or with friends. Truth be told, I feel like I'm doing a decent track dirty by placing it so low, but while I can objectively appreciate the stage's positive qualities, it's just not a course I have a lot of fun playing. My biggest issue with the Mushroom Cups water park is that it really doesn't have any of the iconic scenery I typically associate with a water park. There's no lazy river, or log flume, or a big tube slide, or really anything that reminds me of a water park except, well, you know, the water. As the second track in Mario Kart 8, it's pretty basic in its design, and frankly quite boring compared to other tracks in the game as nothing truly defines it. They just needed to be something more interesting going on with this amusement park themed track because with a song as upbeat and energetic as Water Parks is, the course design simply leaves a lot to be desired. You might be noticing a trend for these bottom ranked courses because London Loop is another track that I honestly forget exists because it's difficult to remember all the real life locations Mario Kart Tour has brought to the franchise. Outside of two big shortcut opportunities, there isn't really a whole lot about London Loop that helps it stand out. The laps themselves don't feel radically different from one another, and the course in general just lacks a strong identity. I do enjoy its rock theme, which is a nice change of pace from Mario Kart 8's jazz-heavy soundtrack, but that alone is not able to elevate London Loop to be one of my favorite tracks in the game. Over the years, Super Bell Subway has grown on me, but I'd be lying if I said it was one of my favorite tracks in Mario Kart 8. I won't deny that racing through a subway is a cool concept, but I find myself feeling frustrated more often than not when playing on this course. It feels so hard to get your momentum back on this track because aside from the very final turn, there really aren't any significant ways to make up ground. It does feel great to squeeze between the gap in the wall and the trains to hit an ultra mini turbo, but aside from some solid music, there just isn't anything else in this course for me to personally justify ranking it any higher. Honestly, I don't know what they were thinking when they made lap 2 of Amsterdam Drift because it's perhaps the single worst lap in the entire game. You spend almost the entirety of it underwater with nothing interesting to see or do aside from a single boat trick that feels like a waste of time to pull off. Laps 1 and 3 are so much better with pleasant looking, easy to remember sections like gliding to the windmills or drifting through the bed of flowers that it makes me scratch my head in confusion as to what went wrong there in the middle. 
I know Amsterdam's canals are a big part of the city's identity, but certainly there were better ways to incorporate them, and the failure to do so is a big black mark on an otherwise good stage. Maybe it's because the Eiffel Tower is so recognizable and so iconic that I'm a little softer on Paris Promenade than the other tracks from Mario Kart Tour, but I feel this is the first course from that game that I can claim to actually enjoy. While it still isn't one of the best tracks in Mario Kart 8, I think it does the best job of the levels from Tour at showcasing its famous elements, and I wouldn't be surprised if the concept for Tour materialized from the desire to drive under the city's most recognizable points of interest. While all tour levels do this to some extent, what elevates Paris Promenade above the others we've seen on this list already is its whimsical French music, cinematic jumps, and my famously deep-seated love for French architecture. Okay, maybe that last part is a bit of an exaggeration, but it certainly is a pleasant track to look at. An issue that many of Mario Kart 8's remade courses suffer from is that of a lost identity, and Toad's Turnpike is probably the best example of that. What I used to view as a pretty brutal course that constantly tested your ability to react quickly is now a fairly pedestrian course with little to no danger at all. Considering that at this point there are about a thousand other city-based levels, losing what made Totes Turnpike so memorable really hurts its ranking here. That said, I do enjoy some of the changes, like being able to ramp off certain cars, but personally I can't get over the anti-gravity sections that completely remove the thrill that this track used to bring. It's far from the worst course in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but it may very well be the most disappointing retro level. Sky High Sunday is a bright, colorful track based around ice cream that feels oddly similar in theme to Sweet Sweet Canyon. Truth be told, I'm just not all that impressed by the concept of using sugary treats for a level anymore, as it's something we've seen repeatedly throughout the Mario franchise. The fact that they did a second one in Mario Kart 8 makes it feel like filler because they ran out of ideas but needed to fill out the booster course pass. It's not the worst track I've ever played, but it's fairly short with not a lot of shortcuts or interesting set pieces to make it memorable. Sky High Sunday needed to do something more interesting to get me to sing its praises, as I'm not even really all that fond of its music either, and it's why I think this track is mediocre at best. Ice Ice Outpost's saving grace comes down to how it gets more enjoyable over time as you learn all of its shortcuts. However, with that said, I'm not sure if there's a larger disparity between how much I like a track's song versus how much I enjoy the track as there is with Ice Ice Outpost. While I enjoy its music and appreciate that it's an ice slash snow track that tries to do something a little different with the theme, it ultimately doesn't work for me as the design is a little too bland and boring for my taste. I almost always forget this map exists, and I often wonder if that's worse than just being straight up bad. If it wasn't for Choco Mountain's insanely catchy music track, I don't think I could really justify ranking the Mario Kart 8 version of this track as high as I have, because it's one of the more disappointing course remakes in the game. One of the things I look forward to when I hear an old track is being brought back is how they will update the visuals, and Choco Mountain is a rare case where I don't feel it lived up to the expectations I had in my mind. It used to feel like you were driving on and surrounded by chocolate, and in Mario Kart 8 it just feels like a bland looking mountain if I'm being honest. I also think the widening of the course makes the beginning sections a lot less interesting, and with no fear of falling off the track and going backwards, a lot of the tension that made the N64 course great is gone. It's not a terrible track, but it's not great either, and it's a shame because I really think they could have done a better job with this one. This might be my most controversial placing, but I've never really been a big fan of Mushroom Gorge myself. I've never really enjoyed the main gimmick of bouncing off mushrooms, as I don't like the fact that you can easily overshoot them with a star or mushrooms, and those will be the items you most frequently get when trying to mount a comeback. The music also isn't particularly memorable, and the course design is your typical Mario Grassland setting which isn't much to write home about. The saving grace of this track lies in its big jump at the end, which allows you to skip the entire final turn of the course and feels great to pull off. I wish Mario Kart 8 had more of these moments, and so while I'm not totally fond of Mushroom Gorge, I must give it credit for having such an exciting trick. Dry Dry Desert was somewhat of a boring map to begin with, but Mario Kart 8 found a way to make it even less interesting by removing the tornadoes that the GameCube version was known for. The opening few turns and new water section towards the end of the track are extremely pedestrian and offer little engagement in comparison to the chaotic twisters that once roamed the course. While they were fairly easy to dodge in Double Dash, every once in a while you or your opponent would make a mistake and accidentally drift into one, which was always funny and gave the course a little unpredictability, and it's disappointing that possibility no longer exists. The only thing saving Dry Dry Desert from a worse rank is how much comeback potential exists on this course, as I can think of many clutch top 3 finishes thanks to a few well-timed mushrooms at the end of the race. 
Still, for as exhilarating as that can be, Dry Dry Desert doesn't have much else to justify it climbing any higher on this ranking. Fans of Grumble Volcano, I am sorry because you are probably wondering why I've ranked this course so low and I really wish I could tell you. Truth be told, it's hard to place my finger on exactly what makes me feel so indifferent about the stage considering you're racing on a crumbling volcano. I think it's neat how the stage gets progressively more difficult as the race goes on and yet, something about this stage doesn't click for me. I just don't feel strongly about the music or the track design, even if the concept for the stage is cool. It probably deserves to be higher, but because it failed to leave a big impression on me, this is where it'll stay. There aren't many moments as exhilarating in Mario Kart as vertically ascending up a waterfall like we do in Shy Guy Falls, which is easily the best aspect about this course. The problem is that aside from one noteworthy section, Shy Guy Falls doesn't really stand out to me in any other way. Its course design is largely uneventful and kind of boring, its music track elicits a nice sense of adventure but isn't one of my favorites in the game, and while the level has a pleasant aesthetic, nothing about it really screams Shy Guy to me as it honestly feels like a Donkey Kong Country Returns course. Still, I really do love the waterfall section a lot, which is enough to keep it out of MK8's bottom tier for me. When I initially played Sydney Sprint, it was easily my favorite of the Mario Kart Tour tracks at the time, but since Wave 4 of the Booster Course Pass came out, I've lost some favor with the track. Sydney Sprint is still a decent stage, with some good moments, but ultimately feels overshadowed now by some of the other real-world courses that have come out. That said, it's a lot of fun driving in and out of the iconic Sydney Opera House, and the music track is nice and upbeat and very catchy. Unfortunately, there are just so many better tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and Sydney Sprint is now just one of over a dozen real-world tracks, which makes it tough to stand out and also hard to justify ranking higher. I've got to admit that Mario Kart 8's version of Rainbow Road might be my least favorite in the series. It isn't a bad track, but comparatively feels a little underwhelming to some of the previous Rainbow Roads. Don't get me wrong, the space station concept is cool and the music is decent too, but I've just never felt the same sense of awe and wonder that I typically feel from other Rainbow Roads. Whereas I usually look forward to Rainbow Road whenever it pops up online, I usually wind up picking something else if it's the Mario Kart 8 version, which tells me how I really feel about this track. Perhaps it's just PTSD from how long it took to get good at this course on 200cc that has warped my opinion of the stage, but MK8's Rainbow Road just doesn't really do it for me, which is why I've put it in the bottom third of this ranking. If I had to pick one defining quality that separates Mario Kart 8 from previous titles in the franchise, it would have to be its cinematic nature. There are many, many breathtaking moments in MK8, but when I think of my personal favorites, seeing the lit up Christmas village in the background of Merry Mountain as you race towards the finish is high up there on my list. The scenery and atmosphere does a great job of capturing the holiday spirit that makes Christmas so wonderful, and it actually kind of blows my mind that it took so long for the Mario Kart franchise to get a track like this. My only complaint is that I wish more of the decorations on the outskirts of the map were incorporated into the race because it would have been cool to trick off presents or slide down giant candy canes. As is, Merry Mountain is a fine race, but it's definitely a course that's carried by its visuals and cheery tone, and I think how much you like this track will be directly correlated to how much you enjoy Christmas. After a stretch of several really good Mario Kart Tour maps, Rome Avanti was somewhat disappointing to me considering how appealing Rome is as a location. This track blew its load too early with the Colosseum being the first place you visit because while it's cool to start the course off with a bang, the race feels like it gets progressively more boring from there. I do enjoy the nighttime aesthetic, but Roma Monte feels unimpressive compared to other tour tracks. It's by far my least favorite track from Booster Course Wave 6, but it isn't terrible and I enjoy its music track and for some reason get a big kick out of gliding through the fuzzy ring before the finish line in lap 3. I have to admit that Riverside Park isn't really the most interestingly designed track in Mario Kart 8, and yet I find myself voting for it quite often when playing online. I think what differentiates a course like this from other GBA remakes like Snowland and Boo Lake that I don't enjoy as much is its atmosphere and setting. The jungle environment with a sprinkle of the Mario aesthetic under a sunset sky is very appealing to me, and I also like the goofy walking piranha plant creatures that serve as hazards on the track. I acknowledge that it's very short, but it's got a great music track and interesting visuals, which is more than you can say about some of the courses we've seen on this list thus far. The version of the N64 Rainbow Road that made it into Mario Kart 8 is honestly a shell of its former self. Not only is it dramatically shorter than the original, but it removes the most iconic feature of the stage as you can no longer execute the huge skip at the beginning of the track. 
While this is disappointing, the N64 Rainbow Road remake is still a ton of fun thanks to its classic music and Chain Chomp gimmick. It's not the best Rainbow Road, and it doesn't quite stack up to the original, but it's also not the worst Rainbow Road either. As a big fan of Mario Superstar Baseball, it's nice to know that Mario Stadium is canonically located in Los Angeles, California, and that little detail alone leaps it ahead of several other Mario Kart Tour tracks. What helps LA laps even further is how each lap feels distinct from one another. Lap 1 takes you around a sunny beach, Lap 2 takes you through the heart of the city, and Lap 3 takes you through an industrial park before bringing you back to the boardwalk at the start. If it wasn't for a music track that kind of irritates me and a somewhat anticlimactic final stretch, Los Angeles Laps would have a solid argument as the best course from Mario Kart Tour, but as it is, it's somewhere in the middle. Daisy Circuit has one of my absolute favorite music tracks in the Mario Kart franchise, and the Mario Kart 8 remix of it is a large contributing factor as to why I've ranked it so high. Otherwise, Daisy Circuit is a somewhat unremarkable track that I don't necessarily hate, but don't love either. The secret path that lets you glide past the Daisy and Luigi statues is nice, but overall the course feels maybe a little too casual. Obviously that works with the relaxing theme of the course, but it's not all that engaging to me. I think there are many better circuits in Mario Kart 8 and the franchise at large, but if you prefer less demanding tracks, I could see why you might rank this a little higher. I'm not sure if there is a stage in Mario Kart that I have more PTSD from than Piranha Plant Slide thanks to its hectic final stretch. The amount of times that I've lost a race or placed significantly worse than I was going to thanks to getting messed up going for that final shortcut is honestly unreal, and I feel like I subconsciously avoid this stage online for that reason. However, my painful memories aside, Piranha Plant Slide is a fine course that checks off a lot of the boxes that I have for a great Mario Kart track. It's fast-paced and chaotic with tight turns and narrow paths, it's dynamic with lots of trickable surfaces and rushing water to move faster, and I enjoy its music track and underground Mario level vibe, too. It's not one of my absolute favorites, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy Piranha Plant Slide. The Eel and Dolphin Shoals is one of the most memorable sections in Mario Kart 8 for me because I'm a bit of a sucker for any section of a track where you are able to quickly hit multiple tricks in succession. I love the rush it gives you, and I'm always excited to reach that section of the course to see how many tricks I can nail in a row off his back. Tricks are really what make this course great, and I similarly enjoy tricking off the underwater pipe currents as well as with dolphins towards the beginning of the track. Overall, Dolphin Shoals is solid from start to finish, and it deserves love for its course design and nice details, like how the energy picks up for the final stretch with a pretty sweet jazz solo as you emerge from the water. I know there is a contingent of people out there who really don't like many of the circuit courses in Mario Kart because they find them boring, but I think they are generally a lot of fun because they have to focus on being good tracks first and foremost. Mario Circuit is a great example of this because the track is essentially a giant figure eight, and yet it's still really enjoyable to race on. The way the road is shaped to make it easy to hit multiple Ultra Mini Turbos each lap is really satisfying, and in particular I enjoy the final stretch where you can drift right into a ramp that sends you gliding over the finish line. Unlike other courses which can distract from their poor course design with their impressive spectacle or gimmicks, Mario Circuit has to be the definition of a rock-solid pure race, and the fact that it succeeds with such a banger music track to boot allows it to just escape being in the bottom third of this list. I won't lie, Mario Circuit 3 probably deserves to be a bit lower on this list, but playing this track puts me into nostalgia overload. Super Mario Kart was not a game I played very often as a young kid, but hearing this track's music unlocked some of my very, very earliest memories, and I'd be lying if I said it didn't bring me an immense amount of joy. I also adore the classic Mario aesthetic, and the track itself is pretty enjoyable with lots of opportunities to save time and close or widen the gap between you and the other racers. What holds this course back from a higher ranking is its simplicity, because unless I'm mistaken, this is the only track that is a 100% pure race. There's no anti-gravity, no gliding, and nowhere to even trick off of, and while that can be a nice change of pace from other Mario Kart 8 tracks, I can't justify placing it over many of the game's other terrific courses. Calamari Desert is a rare example of a remade track in Mario Kart 8 where I actually prefer the original version, but that doesn't mean it's a bad course by any means. I just think that the way the course was modified doesn't really add anything noteworthy to the track, with the few spots added in to use the game's new mechanics feeling somewhat forced. Calamari Desert is also an extremely rare example of a course where I enjoy the original music better than the live band cover because I enjoy the atmosphere created by the N64's version slightly more. 
Still, I enjoy the gimmick of dodging the train and driving on the train tracks, and it always feels good to cut off time by boosting through the sand. It may not be the best N64 course in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but it is a solid track I never mind playing. Something I find hilarious is how Luigi did not get one track themed after him in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe despite there being nearly 100 courses, but Thwomp did. Fucking Thwomp, the limbless statue man got a course, but Mario's own brother did not. Figure that one out. Even funnier is the fact that Thwomp's course is actually quite good, with its own distinct style and several memorable sections. Gliding underneath the massive Thwomp in the middle of the stage always comes to mind because it feels like something out of an Indiana Jones movie, but I like the final glide section before the finish line too for how competitive it feels during a close race. Overall, Thwomp Ruins is a good map with a good music track and a solid end to MK8's Mushroom Cup. Being released in the same cup, Vancouver Velocity and Los Angeles Laps feel like two sides of the same coin, one winter themed and one summer themed, and while I definitely prefer summer to winter, I'm giving Vancouver Velocity the slight nod here. It starts with the music, as I'd say the chic-esque disco track is one of the two best songs to come from Mario Kart Tour. Then I gotta highlight the bridge section in the first lap, because a problem I have with a lot of sections in Mario Kart 8 is how they often feel too wide and safe, and this area is narrow and chaotically fun and makes great use of the anti-gravity gimmick. Vancouver Velocity is also a gorgeous level, especially towards the beginning, and I really like its various locations. It's one of Mario Kart Tour's better tracks, but it does make me sad because driving through Mario Arena makes me want a full-fledged Mario hockey game. It's really a shame I don't like the music track for Koopa Cape because I enjoy just about everything else about this Mario enemy themed map. The giant Koopa shells, the underwater halfpipe, the cliffside aesthetic, there's just so much to like. One thing I don't like is the removal of the rotating electric bars found in the Wii version because it feels like an unnecessary change. Mario Kart 8 is already the easiest Mario Kart game in the series and I would have liked to see those hazards stick around to make things more interesting. Still, their absence doesn't make too big of an impact on the course because of Koopa Cape's other sections, like the river area where you can quickly drift downstream, that will always make me view this track in a positive light. I've said it before and I'll say it again that the most bittersweet aspect of Mario Kart is getting to see creative ideas that you wish were fully realized in a Mario platformer or RPG, and Wild Woods is a textbook definition of that for me. Entrancing is the only way I can describe the opening cinematic for this level because it makes me want to be able to explore the world to see all the Shy Guys in what looks like could be their natural habitat. I'm always kind of mystified when playing this course and even amongst other Mario Kart courses, Wildwood stands out for its appearance and concept. What elevates this course further in my eyes is the fact that it's pretty thrilling with its massive water slide area, gorgeous glide section, and many trickable jumps. It's hard to have a bad time racing on Wild Woods, and as a pretty casual drummer, I've got to give it some extra bonus points for having a song in 5-4, because it really appeals to the music nerd in me. The opening notes of Mario Circuit always set the tone for this Mario Kart DS track in the best way, as I feel the music really captures the feel-good spirit and good times of Mario Kart. I love the atmosphere of this course, and really enjoy the scenic forest section, and getting to see Princess Peach's castle too. This Mario circuit also stands out for being a bit more complex than other versions we've seen throughout the series, and I like how the last few sharp turns can often decide the outcome of the race. From its course design, to its music, to its atmosphere, Mario Circuit DS is a level I definitely vibe with, and one of the very best circuit tracks in the franchise. Can someone tell me why the Moonview Highway theme slaps so goddamn hard? Because I can't figure it out. All I know is that it makes racing on this course 10 times better than it would have been without it, and it stands as one of my favorite Mario Kart 8 songs. As far as the track itself is concerned, it's alright, but I wish they wouldn't have reduced the number of cars on the road so it felt a little more chaotic. I'm also not crazy about the aesthetic changes made here as I feel the stage lost some character in the transition. To me, Moonview Highway is a perfectly average map with an above average music track, which is why it just falls short of this ranking's top half. One of my favorite parts of Mario Kart 8 is being able to see the Game Boy Advance and Super Nintendo courses come to life in 3D, and Sky Garden is among my favorites. This track gives off Gusty Garden Galaxy vibes despite predating it by several years, and I love the ethereal feeling you get from racing on cloud tops. The aesthetic of this garden is its strongest attribute, but it also has a great upbeat music track that really sells the sense of adventure that racing in the sky should produce. The track itself is a little boring at times, but has a few areas you can cut through with items that keep it interesting enough. With no glaring issues, Sky Garden is perhaps just one big set piece away from being considered one of Mario Kart 8's better tracks. 
Did you know this course was called Electrodrome and not Electrodome? Because I didn't either until I made this list. My inability to read aside, this is a really creative course that explores what it would be like if Mario and friends attended a rave. You honestly feel like you're racing inside a dance club with all the disco balls and speakers, and I love how you can see screens on the wall with Mario characters dancing. I'm actually not crazy about the music here, but I do like the course and particularly enjoy the final bend and shortcut before the finish line. Overall, a solid track, and did you know it's the only course in Mario Kart history with a one-word name? As far as opening Mario Kart tracks are concerned, I think Mario Kart Stadium might be the very best in the series. The atmosphere, the music, and the course design are all perfect to get you in the mood for some Mario Kart, and the simple figure 8 design does a great job of showing off the game's anti-gravity mechanic. I love boosting through the dirt and pipes in the course's final stretch to steal a higher placing at the last second and enjoy the aesthetics that make you feel like you're in an official circuit race. I don't think I can really justify ranking it much higher than where it is due to its basic nature, but it deserves praise for ensuring that Mario Kart 8 creates a good first impression for all who play it. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe marks the third appearance of Donut Plane 3 in the Mario Kart franchise, and it's a classic case of third times the charm as this is its best version yet. Though this track has no real notable gimmicks, its sharp turns and nostalgic aesthetic make it one of the most fun Super Mario Kart tracks to race on. I love its almost tropical sounding music and final corner shortcut, and appreciate how this somewhat simple three decade old track still holds up all these years later. It doesn't really hurt the stage, but my only gripe might be that the bridge section is no longer all that scary or punishing, but considering it's far from the only legacy track to be made easier in its remake, I can't really fault the MK8 version of Donut Plane 3. Sherbet Land is maybe the most relaxing map in Mario Kart 8 to me because of its wholesome, wintry atmosphere. The light-hearted music and skating Shy Guys always just put me in a good mood, and with MK8 toning down its difficulty with the new underwater section, I find Sherbet Land really easygoing and fun. That said, I found this course to be among the most difficult to rank because even though I enjoy this version of the track, I can't help but feel like they've neutered the challenge it provided on the GameCube. You used to have to execute tight turns while avoiding the icy water and sliding freezies, but now you can actually use the water to avoid them entirely, and I think that's kinda lame. It was inevitable, I suppose, with water no longer being a hazard in Mario Kart, and I still like the course, but it does leave me conflicted. Hey, you made it halfway! Hopefully that means you don't think I'm a dumb idiot yet and have been enjoying the video. If true, please be sure to give the video a like and to consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. It really helps the channel and I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much, now back to the ranking. There are many different things that can allow a Mario Kart track to succeed, from its track design to its music, but one thing that elevates a lot of Mario Kart 8's tracks above others in the series is the level of attention to detail these courses are crafted with. Sweet Sweet Canyon really stands out in this regard because whether it's the massive cakes around which the track is built, or the gingerbread fans in the audience, this track really nails its theme. Its innocent, childlike music sets the perfect goofy tone for such a whimsical track and completes one of the best aesthetics in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. My only real issue with Sweet Sweet Canyon is that its course design is very bland with almost no trick spots and lots of wide, hazardless sections that aren't very exciting to race through. For how creative the level's theming is, I expected a little more from the course itself, even if it is only the third race in the Mushroom Cup. Athens Dash is one of my favorite of MK8's Mario Kart Tour levels thanks to its bombastic soundtrack, ancient Greek aesthetic, and phenomenal course layout. Though, it's mainly the last category that really won me over with sections like the giant staircase at the end of laps 2 and 3. Performing all those tricks in succession is really satisfying, especially in a tight race when you can feel the pressure to execute when entering the area, and I love the rush I get from it. Athens Dash had some big expectations to live up to after the two terrific tour tracks in Wave 4 came out, and thanks to moments like the gliding section at the start of Lap 3, it surprisingly did. Big Blue is a fairly unique course, serving as not only the second F-Zero track in the game, but as the only race aside from Mount Wario to have a final destination as well. Like Mute City, there are tons of boosters on the ground and panels that give you coins as you drive over them, and they really get you moving fast quickly. The water slide portion of the stage really showcases that, as it's hard to find another section in MK8 that is as exhilarating as drifting down the slope at high speeds with a star or a mushroom is. My only complaint with Big Blue is that it feels pretty difficult to make a comeback on, as you're pretty much relying on good items due to the lack of shortcuts. Still, Big Blue is a fun map that makes me want a new F-Zero game whenever I play it, even if it is my least favorite crossover course. 
I have to admit that by the time Wave 4 of the Booster Course Pass released, I was a little tired of the Mario Kart Tour maps, but Bangkok Rush changed my perspective as it was far and away the best one I had played up until that point. Since then, other tour stages have come out that I like a little more, but Bangkok Rush really left a positive impression on me thanks to how dynamic it felt in comparison to prior tour levels. Right from the beginning, you were given opportunities to nail tricks and choose different paths, and the course retains that level of engagement pretty much the whole way through. My favorite section is during the third lap where you can drift through the parking garage to get an Ultra Mini Turbo before launching out to trick over the Bazaar tents, and I love the way it all flows together. I wish every Mario Kart Tour track had this level of quality, and it's a big part of why I consider Wave 4 to be the best wave of the Booster Course Pass. Cloudtop Cruise is one of the most visually striking courses in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and it really showcases the game's cinematic nature. Whether you're drifting over the clouds, launching out of a ship cannon, or dodging lightning bolts to hit boost pads, this stage captures Mario Kart 8's epic feel perfectly. I appreciate this course's solid level design too, and I'm a big fan of double tricking off the vine leaves near the finish. And to top it all off, it has a fantastic music track that embodies Super Mario Galaxy's bold, ambitious themes and makes you feel like a true hero while you race. I almost feel bad not ranking it higher, but that's only because Mario Kart 8 has so many more terrific tracks left to come. Minecart levels are one of those tried and true video game gimmicks that seem to always work, and I'm happy to report that the concept translates well in the remake of Wario's Goldmine. Its roller coaster esque nature already made it an enjoyable track to race on, but the new anti gravity section does a really good job at complementing that feel. I enjoy having the option between a faster path with one item and a slower path with a double item, and love those kind of risk reward decisions in Mario Kart. It makes the final stretch that much more exciting, and I love tricking off that final corner to improve my placement in the final seconds. Along with its lovable, goofy soundtrack and unique prospecting theme, it's hard to not enjoy this track, and it's why it's firmly in the top half of the courses in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Some words just make you sound like you're trying to be smart or fancy when you say them, but I really think describing Moo Moo Meadows as wonderfully bucolic is as accurate as I can be when explaining what makes this course great. The way it captures the romanticized, feel-good aspects of living life on the countryside is impressive, and it gives Moo Moo Meadows a charming quality to it. I love tricking off Monty Mole holes and swerving around cows, and contend that this is the best execution of the rural farming theme tracks in Mario Kart. As someone who admittedly isn't much of an outdoorsman, this track's vibe makes me want to go outside and play in a field, and that's about as big of a compliment as I can pay to a course like this. Part of the joy of playing Mario Kart as a fan of other Mario games is getting to see locations from those titles be reimagined as racetracks, and TikTok Clock is among my favorite examples to point to for this. It's impressive how they were able to effectively adapt such a unique, innovative idea into a Mario Kart course, as many of the design elements and hazards of the Super Mario 64 version can be seen here as well. You'll dodge swinging pendulums, ramp off clock hands, and even trick off moving gears as you race around the track. Honestly, my only issue with the course is its soundtrack, which is one of my least favorite in the game, but I can get over it because the Inside the Clock aesthetic is original and one of my personal favorites within the Mario franchise. I don't know what the general consensus is around Wario Stadium, but I consider it underrated based solely on how long I slept on how good this course is. When I first ranked it on this list, it was significantly lower than it is now because truthfully, I always think of the N64 version of Wario Stadium when I hear the name, but the DS version is a phenomenal track that I love for its challenge. Mistakes are more punishing here as the course feels condensed compared to many of Mario Kart 8's other tracks, leaving less room for error. As a result, performing well on this course makes me feel better than most races would, and for that alone it deserves its ranking here. But then I consider its iconic music track and visually engaging backgrounds, and it becomes clear that this is one of the best tracks in Mario Kart 8. The very last Mario Kart Tour track to make it into Mario Kart 8 has a strong argument as that game's strongest course because Madrid Drive is nothing but quality. My favorite aspect about it has to be its constantly changing scenery, as one moment you're drifting through a museum, and the next you're racing through the middle of a soccer game. More so than other tour tracks, I really feel like I'm getting to see the entire city in Madrid Drive, and moments like gliding over the fountain stand out strongly. I love the sleeping wiggler in lap 1, and like that he wakes up in the next lap, and appreciate how many little details are crammed into this course. With an incredible music track that is one of my favorites in Mario Kart 8, and plenty of time savers throughout the course, Madrid Drive shows how Nintendo came a long way from its first few Mario Kart Tour levels. 
As someone who played an ungodly amount of Mario Kart 7 back in the day, I was shocked that I had forgotten about Rosalina's Ice World, but it wound up working out for me because I was pleasantly surprised when I realized it was a really good track. From the beginning ice halfpipe that's easy to get an ultra midi turbo from, to the trick spot just before the finish, this course is enjoyable the whole way through. I love seeing spinning galaxies in the sky and swimming penguins underneath the ice and dig the presentation of Rosalina's Ice World a lot. There may be better tracks from Mario Kart 7, but I'm definitely happy to see the return of Rosalina's Ice World. I think anyone who played Mario Kart 64 back in the day will tell you how cool it was to be able to veer off-road in Royal Raceway and drive around the grounds of Princess Peach's castle, which is why Peach Gardens has always held a soft spot with me. It feels like the realized version of what we all imagined in our heads while driving off course when we were younger, and it looks even better here in HD on the Switch. I love looking at all the Mario topiary around the stage, and it's nice getting to see the castle up close again as well. However, what solidifies this level spot in the top half of this ranking is the excellent layout. There are plenty of shortcuts and time savers, and I for one always love tricking off the Monty Mole holes, and it's why I consider Peach's Garden one of the best Mario Kart DS tracks. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has no shortage of Mario circuits to choose from, and of the five available in the game, the best Mario circuit has to be the remake of the Game Boy Advance version. While a lot of tracks are flashy and bombastic and take place in gimmicky settings, this GBA course is one that actually feels like a go-karting course. It's a track that shines through its rock-solid design and incredibly jazzy funk music, showing fundamentals are all you need for a great Mario Kart track. I can understand that for some it may lack the flash that makes other courses so memorable, but personally all I need is for the track to be fun to race on, and with several fun tight turns and multiple areas where you can make up ground if you're behind, I'd say Mario Circuit for the GBA more than delivers. Maybe I'm a simple man, but the idea of a racetrack made of cheese amuses me. It's not a concept for a track that should work as well as it does, and yet it's a ton of fun busting through blocks of cheese on shortcuts and tricking off holes littered all over the track. I appreciate how despite its short length, Cheese Land still feels big, and with multiple shortcuts it's much more interesting than other GBA remakes like Boo Lake and Snowland. Also, how in the hell does a map designed around Cheese have a music track that slaps so hard? I'm not sure, but it definitely contributes to Cheese Land's high rank. It really fills me with a lot of joy to see DK Mountain looking as clean and crisp as it does here in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It's just as fun to race on as its Double Dash version is, and they honestly didn't need to change much for it to be one of MK8's best tracks. While getting blasted out of a cannon has lost some of its uniqueness, racing down the mountain is just as exhilarating as ever with its massive boulders and tight turns. I'm so glad they kept the shortcut before the bridge intact because it's not insanely hard, but feels so good when you can clutch a better placement with it. DK Mountain has always been an excellent track, and Nintendo was smart to hold onto this one for the final booster course wave. The massive jump that once made Royal Raceway special back on the N64 might seem incredibly tame by today's standards, but that doesn't hold the course back from being an incredibly fun map to race on. I've always enjoyed the sharp turns that start the race because it's easy to get an ultra mini turbo and gain speed quickly. Similarly, I've always enjoyed the sharp turns at the end because they are the perfect breeding grounds for a comeback. I love the music and appreciate the addition of a ramp in the grass before the big bridge, but I do have one major problem with Mario Kart 8's version of Royal Raceway. Why can't we drive around Peach's castle like we could on the N64? Even though it was pointless, it was just so cool that you could see Peach's castle up close and personal just like Super Mario 64. I understand Nintendo probably didn't want to create a huge Peach's castle just so people could drive around its grounds, but I won't lie that I was a bit disappointed when I first played this track. I feel like Mario Kart 8 is arguably known for its jazz-heavy soundtrack more than anything else, which is why hearing the song for Bowser's Castle 3 really blew my mind. Sure, there are other rock songs in the game, but this is a straight-up metal track and I absolutely love it and the intensity it brings to the course. Bowser's Castle 3's atmosphere is actually insane and the lava geysers and pissed-off thwomps make it one of the most aggressive levels in the entire franchise. This Super Nintendo remake has a ton of raw energy that only enhances how exciting every boost and trick feels, and few moments compared to successfully riding the thin walls in the middle of the track. Bowser's Castle 3 instantly became one of my favorite Mario Kart 8 tracks after I played it, and it really gives me hope for the future of SNES track remakes. I think it can be said about any of the crossover tracks in Mario Kart 8 that the bigger the fan you are of the series being featured, the more you'll like the stage, and that's absolutely true for me in Hyrule Circuit. 
As a massive Legend of Zelda fan, I love all the little details like how the coins are turned into rupees and how the piranha plants are changed into Dekubabas, and think it's so cool that you get to race through Hyrule Castle. It's a fantastic tribute to the series, complete with a great remix of the classic Legend of Zelda theme that plays during the race, and the ability to unlock a trickable Master Sword by hitting three crystal switches. The track design isn't my favorite in the game, but it's solid enough, and it makes Hyrule Circuit a fantastic choice for any session. Top to bottom, Singapore Speedway is the best Mario Kart tour track in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and whenever I play it, I wonder what the hell happened with some of the earlier real-world courses. Perhaps it was in response to some of the backlash that the earlier tour tracks received, but it feels like Nintendo really stepped their game up as this course is visually stunning. The city feels vibrant and full of life, and its peppy electronic music complements all the exciting stunts you'll be performing and helps create that energy. I'm always blown away when I remember how good Singapore Speedway is, and I wish every tour track had a moment as memorable as gliding over the soccer pitch is. Not that I really desire to see more real location racetracks, but if it was guaranteed they'd be at least the quality of Singapore Speedway, I don't think I'd really mind to see a few more. Alright, so I understand that this is probably one of my two or three most controversial placements, so let me just say that I do really enjoy Waluigi Pinball. It has a creative gimmick, an iconic music track, and really fun course design, and I can understand why some consider this the best track in the series. However, despite appreciating all its positive qualities, I personally don't find it as fun to race on as many of the tracks that we'll discuss in the top 30. It has nothing to do with the course itself either, this ranking really just comes down to personal preference. I'm sure this will piss off some of you, but just know it's not you, Waluigi's Pinball, it's me. The mountains have been a setting for many Mario Kart maps over the years, but Rock Rock Mountain might just be my favorite of them all. Speeding up the mountain towards the end of the track is one of my favorite set pieces in the game, and I absolutely love the feeling that comes after when crossing the finish line while gliding through the air. It's one of the many reasons this course stands out as one of the 3DS's best tracks, and in general, the spectacle of this course contributes to why it succeeds as well as it does. But also, can we just appreciate for a moment that the Rock Cup has a course that takes place on a rocky mountain while rock music plays in the background called Rock Rock Mountain? When I think of what makes Cheap Cheap Beach a great Mario Kart track, I always think of its chaotic final stretch. A few hard turns and mud pits can make the last few moments of this race as intense as any section you'll find in Mario Kart. I can think of many satisfying clutch wins that were a result of surviving the insanity that this area produces, and those moments are what I love this franchise for. As for the rest of the track, it does a great job balancing the intensity found in its final moments with beautiful scenery and a calming music track. I'm a bit of a sucker for tropical themed levels if I'm being honest, so it's not a surprise to see myself rank it so high even if my heart still belongs to Koopa Troopa Beach from Mario Kart 64. Piranha Plant Cove was one of the booster course pass tracks that I anticipated the most, and it still managed to really impress me. Interestingly, I wasn't really enjoying it all that much on my first playthrough, but by the end of the race the track had won me over with its ambitiousness. This course really feels like an adventure, and I love how long it is in comparison to other MK8 courses. There's tons of cool things to see, and each lap feels very unique, and it's made me somewhat rethink the future of Mario Kart. Could we live in a future where instead of laps we race through a grand adventure combining classic Mario with Mario Kart? Probably not, but Piranha Plant Cove deserves a lot of credit for turning me onto a new possibility I hadn't previously considered. The Wii version of Rainbow Road is one of the most iconic in the franchise for good reason. It has a legendary music track, fun details like how you rocket to the earth when you fall off the track, and plenty of fun memorable sections. Unfortunately, the famous ultra shortcuts are no longer possible, but for me that doesn't stop this version of the course from sliding into the top 25. The Booster Course Pass picked a fantastic track to end on, and while I'm sad we didn't get a remake of Double Dash's Rainbow Road, it's honestly hard to be critical towards this excellent stage. Taking inspiration from Super Mario Galaxy's Gold Leaf Galaxy, Maple Treeway has one of my all-time favorite aesthetics in Mario Kart, and I love racing up and down its massive tree. One of my favorite details is how you will often reveal a mushroom when driving through the leaf piles littered throughout the track, because it feels great to get that little extra boost, especially when in first place. The music helps everything feel so wholesome here, and it fills me with a lot of nostalgia despite never owning Mario Kart Wii. Genuinely, there's nothing I can point to that I dislike about this course, and it only just cracks the top 25 because I happen to like the offerings of other tracks a bit better. One of the weird things about Mario Kart 8 is that it has been out for so long that I look back at tracks like Toad Harbor and have to remind myself that it is still technically one of the newer courses in the series, despite already feeling like a classic. 
This seaside course is one of my favorites from the base version of Mario Kart 8 because of its warm vibes and beautiful visuals. There are few sections in Mario Kart as enjoyable as the massive slope before the course's final turn, and I love the view you get of the horizon with the giant Princess Peach Statue of Liberty in the distance. As far as the race itself is concerned, there are tons of standout sections like the trolley bend where it's easy to pull off an Ultra Mini Turbo, or the beginning area where you can trick off a docked boat that come to mind right away. And along with an uplifting and inspiring music track that sets the carefree tone of the course, it's this quality course design that allows Toad Harbor to not just be one of the best Mario Kart 8 tracks, but one of the best Mario Kart tracks, period. When I think of the original 16 new courses that came out when Mario Kart 8 released all the way back in 2014 on the Wii U, I'm impressed at how many banger tracks it released with. Toad Harbor, Mount Wario, and Bowser's Castle are all instant classics, and Sunshine Airport fits right into that category as well. It was only a matter of time before we raced through an airport considering we'd already seen train, car, and boat-themed levels, and it didn't disappoint. Taking inspiration from Super Mario Sunshine's Delfino Airstrip, this level similarly captures the warm atmosphere that its inspiration is known for to create a stunning level with gorgeous visuals and a beautiful music track. It's one of my favorite base MK8 courses, and I'll always be impressed at how Nintendo was able to make one of my least favorite places in real life a setting I always look forward to visiting in-game. Donkey Kong may have the most consistently good tracks throughout the Mario Kart franchise, and DK Summit is a contender for the best of them all. Taking place in a ski resort, this snowy mountain is a blast to race down as you nail tricks off snow piles, ride huge halfpipes, and dodge skiing Shy Guys. It has a really catchy tune, and comes with one of the trickier but most satisfying shortcuts to use in all of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I think the only thing that holds it back slightly is its obvious similarities to DK Mountain, but considering that's another terrific stage in the franchise and there are enough details to separate the two, I wouldn't necessarily say that's a bad thing. While the Booster Course Pass has been an overall net positive for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, tracks like Squeaky Clean Sprint are somewhat bittersweet for me. They make me wish we lived in a reality where every stage got the level of care put into it that Squeaky Clean Sprint did, because it's obvious Nintendo put a lot of effort into making it as polished and creative as possible. The track is one of Mario Kart 8's most dynamic courses, and all it's really missing is an anti-gravity section or else it'd show off everything MK8 Deluxe has to offer. The music is catchy and memorable, the track design is terrific, and the setting is refreshingly unique, leaving no box unchecked. Honestly, if the Booster Course Pass had half as many tracks as it does now, but they were all up to squeaky clean sprints quality, I would be more than thrilled because this course raised the bar of what I expect for Mario Kart DLC. DK Jungle is one of Mario Kart 7's most thrilling tracks, and that excitement was not lost in translation when they brought it over to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Equipped with an awesome remix of DK's Jungle Japes theme, this Donkey Kong Country Returns inspired level retains all of its noteworthy shortcuts and tricks to remain one of Mario Kart's most dynamic tracks. I really enjoy racing through the Banana Shrine, and its exit jump where you glide into the billowing Tiki statues is one of the most memorable in the game. There's really not much I don't like about DK Jungle, and it's why it was an easy pick as a top 20 track in Mario Kart 8. Over 20 years after its debut, Daisy Cruiser still stands out as one of the most unique courses in the Mario Kart franchise, and it's a welcome addition to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Its music really sells the atmosphere of a relaxing vacation and makes it one of the most cozy tracks to race on. Although the satisfying pool shortcut has been eliminated due to water no longer serving as a course hazard, Daisy Cruiser is still a dynamic track and I think it says a lot that there were no major changes outside of that opening section. Racing around and through a cruise ship is just such an original idea for a track, and I love details like how the dining tables inside slide around to create an obstacle for you. Daisy Cruiser was one of the best tracks in Mario Kart Double Dash, and it is again here in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Waluigi's first course from Mario Kart Double Dash is a certified classic, and it made me so happy to see it make a comeback in the Booster Course Pass. Taking place in a giant indoor dirt arena, this track has an insane amount of jumps and trickable surfaces that make it one of the most engaging races in the game. There is also a pretty impressive level of attention to detail in this level, and in particular I love the various character business advertisements and giant jumbotron you can catch a glimpse of yourself racing on. There's nothing I don't enjoy about this track, and whether it's making someone fall off the course right before the finish, or simply vibing to the goofy music track that's fitting for Waluigi, this Mario Kart Double Dash level is timeless and deserving of a top 20 spot on this list. Bowser's Castle levels are just as much of a staple of the Mario Kart franchise as the various Rainbow Roads are, which is why it was refreshing to see the King of the Koopas get a racetrack that deviated from his normal setting. 
Gone are the typical lava moats and stone castles that we're used to, and in is a futuristic dystopian setting that is still able to capture the oppressive nature that Bowser's courses are famous for. On top of being visually striking and thematically original for the Mario Kart franchise, Neo Bowser City is one of the more challenging courses in the game with plenty of sharp turns that will trip up even experienced players. Its soundtrack, while nice thanks to all its musical references, doesn't quite fit the dystopian vibe this course gives off, but that doesn't stop Neo Bowser City from being one of the 3DS's most enjoyable tracks to race on in Mario Kart 8. For my money, Yoshi is the character in Mario Kart that has the most great tracks named after him, and Yoshi Circuit is among the best of the bunch. Whereas some tracks are just named after their character, Yoshi Circuit takes it a step further by modeling itself in the shape of a Yoshi, and believe it or not, it works quite well as a Mario Kart course. It's my favorite circuit course in the series thanks to its chaotic tunnel and iconic shortcut towards the start, and whether it's the original in Double Dash or the Mario Kart 8 version, it's always a blast to play. Its music track is also one of the most nostalgia-inducing in the series for me, and Yoshi Circuit earns its spot just for the serotonin spike I get from hearing those opening notes alone. The beginning moments of Dragon Driftway are some of my favorite in all of Mario Kart because I think it's so awesome how we are literally driving into the belly of the beast to begin the race. Using the snake's body is such a cool concept for a racetrack, and I think the aesthetic of the course is in contention as the series best. The course design is terrific too, and I really enjoy its tight turns and winding nature, and enjoy how unique it feels. Perhaps I just love it because I'm a massive Dragon Ball fan and it makes me imagine racing on Snake Way, but I truly believe Dragon Driftway is one of the top 20 tracks in all of Mario Kart, and a shining example of Nintendo's impressive creativity. Yoshi Valley on the N64 is one of my all-time favorite Mario Kart tracks, so it's no surprise that the Mario Kart 8 version would be one of my favorite tracks in that game as well. Though I'm a little sad that your placement is no longer kept a mystery until you finish the race, I still love how you can choose your own route with all the many branching pathways. This version also retains the intensity found at the end of the track when everything narrows over the tiny bridge just before the final turn. I still contend that nothing feels quite as good as dropping a bomb on that bridge while in first place, knowing full well your path to the finish line is clear. The 3DS version of Rainbow Road may very well be the most epic track in all of Mario Kart history, which is why it's no surprise it's found its way into the top 15. In this course, you'll be racing through the cosmos as you trick off asteroid craters and cross planetary rings in one of only a few non-looping tracks in Mario Kart 8. Even if it isn't the longest track in the series, the scale and scope of this course is unlike anything previously seen before, which gives it an incredible atmosphere. It has a fantastic music track and several standout sections, like the stretch where the road wiggles to allow for extra boosts, and it is an easy selection for the top tier of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's tracks. My favorite Game Boy Advance remake in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe easily has to be Ribbon Road. There's so much to love about this course, from its toy box aesthetic, to its multiple shortcuts, to the lighthearted music track that plays while racing. The track is extremely fun from beginning to end, but I especially enjoy the section where the ribbons are in motion allowing you to hit multiple tricks in a row for extra speed. Ribbon Road really set the bar for all GBA tracks to come after it, and I'll always be happy to see it when it pops up online. One of the best features to be introduced to the Mario Kart franchise was the ability to do tricks off jumps and ramps, and no course displays that better than the Excite Bike Arena. The amount of slopes and bumps you can nail tricks off of is absurd, and it always feels great to string them together in succession. I love how even when you get hit on this stage, you never feel out of it because the boost from a trick will get you back up to speed right away. Rather than featuring a ton of obstacles and gimmicks, this is just a straight up race that is all about having good execution and good RNG. It also has a fun, catchy theme that makes playing it enjoyable, which is why Excite Bike Arena kicks off the top 10 tracks in Mario Kart 8. Super Mario Kart only got to see four of its courses make it into Mario Kart 8, and that's okay because its best track made the cut. You might be thinking that I'm smoking crack placing the Super Nintendo Rainbow Road as the best Rainbow Road in the game, but to me this course represents the soul of the franchise. Though comparatively simple next to the other four versions that made it into Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I appreciate how satisfying this course's design is. Executing tight turns and nailing tricks off the rippling floor is just as enjoyable to me as traveling through space and dodging giant chain chomps is, and I've always felt the best Rainbow Road song belonged to the Super Mario Kart version. I won't deny how nostalgia influences my opinion of this track, but it has such a cozy vibe to me and really showcases the simplicity and joy that Mario Kart is known for. On paper, Baby Park seems like the most basic, boring course in the entire game, but if you've played on it, you know that it is one of the absolute best in the entire franchise. 
12 racers being jammed into close quarters leads to so much chaos that there is never a dull moment on this track. You can easily go from last place to first, or first to last in the blink of an eye, and I'm not sure if there is a stage that can replicate the highs and lows of Baby Park. It may not have the pizzazz that some of the other courses in the game do, but what it lacks in novelty it more than makes up for with accelerating action, which is why it's one of the 10 best tracks in Mario Kart 8. Perhaps it is well known within the Mario Kart community that you are able to select the specific season that Animal Crossing takes place in, but as someone who's played this course dozens of times, this was mind-blowing news to me when I found out about it recently. I already thought it was pretty sweet that one course got four different aesthetics at random, but being able to pick which version you'd like to play on makes it even better. As far as the track itself goes, it's one of the best in the entire game, being balanced with lots of things to trick off, a few places to make up ground if you're trailing, and some solid turns that feel satisfying to drift around. I love how each season has slight variations to them, whether it be the ramp placements, or things like Autumn's Leaf Piles that release items like in Maple Treeway. It also, like other crossover maps, has its own currency and sound effects, as well as the best results music in the game bar none. It's really all you could ask for out of a map, and if you told me this was your favorite Mario Kart 8 Deluxe track, you wouldn't have to worry about me asking why. I'm pretty sure Coconut Mall could just be a drag race, and it'd still be one of my favorite courses thanks to its music track. Honestly, I'm not sure there is a more iconic Mario Kart song, and that says a lot for a series as long-lasting and with such good music as this one. Music is such a big part of the Mario Kart experience, so it's worth heaping on the praise, but obviously it isn't the only thing that propels Coconut Mall into the top 10. As far as course designs go, Coconut Mall is also one of the more unique and interesting in the game, and still holds up as such even 15 years after its initial release on the Wii. There are so many great trick opportunities, and the final stretch with the two spinning cars makes for a truly chaotic finish. There's no question Coconut Mall is an all-time Mario Kart track that's deserving of its spot in the top 10. I honestly don't think there has ever been a bad version of Mute City because whether it's the classic version in F-Zero, the really fun Super Smash Bros. map, or the rendition we see here in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it's a level that always delivers. What I admire about Mario Kart 8's take on the stage is how it faithfully recreates the fast-paced nature of the original as you will be boosting nearly the entire time. The increase in pace is noticeable, and I appreciate how the pit areas allow you to max out your coins quickly so you can reach top speed as fast as possible. My only complaint is that the futuristic cityscape is such a joy to look at that it brings me sadness because it makes me want a modern F-Zero game that I know I'll never get. Aside from that, it's one of the best tracks Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has to offer, and proof of concept that crossovers in Mario Kart work. Much like Rainbow Road, every Mario Kart that has been released to date has its own version of Bowser's Castle, and Mario Kart 8's version has to be my pick for the best in the series. There are so many details about this track that I really love, from the way the gate opens during the initial countdown, to the way you can perform tricks off the rippling floor after the giant Bowser hand has punched it. It has a badass theme that's equal parts rock and jazz that helps set the mood right from the opening notes, and gives the track one of my favorite atmospheres in the game. MK8's Bowser Castle may not have the trademark difficulty that can be found in other versions of the track throughout the franchise, but that doesn't hurt it too much because it's still one of the most engaging courses in the series, thanks to its incredible aesthetic and solid course design. I think it's safe to say that the Booster Course Pass was a success, and of all the new maps it produced, none was better than Yoshi's Island from Wave 4's Fruit Cup. Of all 96 courses, this track has by far my favorite aesthetic, and it makes me want a 3D Yoshi's Island game so damn bad. The entire course is a wonderful tribute to one of Nintendo's most underrated games, and I really appreciate all the little details they included, from the cloud that you can hit to produce a red stairway, to the way the coins sound like they do in Yoshi's Island when you pick them up. It's a shining example of the best that Mario Kart has to offer, and my personal pick as the best track themed after another game or franchise. Oh yeah, and who doesn't love that music? It's really difficult to innovate when you are creating the 8th iteration of something, but somehow Nintendo managed to do it again with the creation of non-looping tracks like Mount Wario. Somehow, even after nearly 10 years and the release of several other tracks that copied the idea, Mount Wario still feels special when I get to play it. Being released from a helicopter at the top of a mountain is just about the coolest start to any race in Mario Kart history, and it only gets better from there as you skid down icy slopes, glide through caverns, boost over a dam, and zigzag through a forest on your way to the bottom of the mountain. The final third of the race is so nail-biting, as something about being able to see the finish line from so far away really raises the stakes and anxiety. Mount Wario is unique, it's epic, 
and it has a triumphant sounding music track that adds to the drama, and it's why I feel confident giving it the silver medal for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's best track. From the very first moment I played Music Park, I knew it was my favorite track in the franchise, and the Mario Kart 8 version only made it better. The details it added, like how the music notes scrunch up their face when they hit the ground, only added to the already stunning amount of little details that make this course so great. For example, I love that when you drive on the various keyboards, they play a nice scale, but if you jump on them, it plays a wrong note as if you mashed the keys. It's this attention to detail that makes Music Park so charming, and it's why it would still be one of my favorite levels, even without awesome features like the ability to trick off the impact the giant bouncing notes make. Although there are many great courses in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe that deserve the top spot, Music Park gets the nod for me because of its creative theming and endless replayability. When I asked myself the question of what track I'd pick if I could only guarantee one track made it into the next Mario Kart title, Music Park was the answer I came up with, and it's why I'd rank it as the best track in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And with that, we've come to the end of my ranking of all 96 tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Putting this list together was quite a doozy, and as I said at the start, there is no doubt that many of these placements could change if I was asked to do it again because so many of the levels are neck and neck in quality. But now that it's all over, what do you think? Was my list the wackest thing your eyes have ever viewed, or did you generally agree with my placements? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you want to see more content like this, suggest a future ranked video that you'd like to see. Thank you so much for watching.